are told to work hard to become independent and successful in life, but we're also told to give joyfully and not to cling to the things we work so hard to get. God reminds us that everything is His. We are entrusted on this earth with time, talent, and treasure. In this podcast, we will learn to live as Jesus teaches. Hey, welcome back to Entrusted by God. I'm Steve Wood. I'm the lead pastor at Mount Pisgah Methodist Church. We're elated that we can be together today just for a few minutes to continue to consider how God is entrusting unto us a life that is so rich, so full, so ripe with opportunity uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm joined today by Dwayne Wood, Ray Bachman, uh, as we continue to kind of um, unpack some of the opportunities before us to live faithfully and to live life God's way. So today, uh, we acknowledge that, uh, you know, there's lots of new things before us. You got a new year, you got a new opportunity, hmm. <clears throat> got new resolutions, but we also acknowledge that people are rarely interested in discipling, coaching, or advice when they're living in times of prosperity. But in times of adversity, uh, somehow we seem more open to that. So today we want to take a look at a biblical character. Uh, His name is Joseph. And we got a passage uh, or two from the book of Genesis. And it's about adversity, testing, and being faithful to God in the midst of all of that all along the way. So, Dwayne, you're going to lead us off, share the passage with us, and then we'll talk about the life of Joseph. Yeah, the passage today is the uh, response that Joseph gives to his brothers after years of being separated and and deceit and uh, a lot of bad things that were done to him. Uh, but he approached his brothers and he called them in close and he said, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For those two years, the famine has been in the land and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. And and so we, we see here Joseph's response, and he was pretty consistent, Ray, throughout the whole uh, time that he was under adversity and being persecuted, first by his brothers and then by his master, whom he was sold to, was forgotten. And uh, he was pretty persistent in his attitude towards obedience to God and never really uh, pulling out the pity card, Hmm. never— Never mm, did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, the backstory of his life and this whole ordeal is really something to behold. Uh, it, in terms of this, this was terrible, but even for the villains in this story, God was gracious and it turned out wonderful. We used, there used to be a TV show, and I'll, I'll, uh, bring the semblance of what I'm saying. There was a, there was a show called Hee Haw and there was a guy that sang a song, gloom, despair and agony. All me. Oh, that's on Hee Haw. I Hee-haw, remember that. Yeah. Very, very if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Well, that almost sounds like the story of Joseph. I mean, whatever he did, whatever, wherever he turned, something bad happened. And, um, and he was obedient. So, you know, as we unpack this, this part of scripture, I think what we want to emphasize is, you know, this this gospel we hear of too many times on some of these radio preachers of health, wealth, prosperity isn't always biblical. I mean, sometimes 
come to Jesus and all, you know what, will break loose. But that doesn't mean Jesus isn't real. It doesn't mean Jesus has come, you know, to give us eternal and abundant life. But it may not be the life that we have scripted. It, it's the life that he scripted. And I'm sure Joseph, you know, never would have scripted this kind of life. In fact, I was with some guys this morning. We were in a Bible study. And just one of the instances where um, Joseph was accused um, of Potiphar's wife of attacking him. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know we've got a pretty big audience, but I mean, this woman every day you just pounded on him, pounded on him, pounded on him, come with me, come with me. And he literally would flee. And so I think in all instances, whenever we're tempted in whatever circumstance, whether it be financially or relationally or whatever, we need to learn to flee if we know it's not what God wants for us. And Joseph is our poster child for fleeing um, in all instances and taking the high road. Um, and it was definitely God that was working in his life because I don't think anybody would have scripted this kind of life for themselves. Yeah, we, we can look at, at Genesis thirty seven twenty eight. We're not going to read the passage, but he was sold into slavery by his brothers who hated him for 20 shekels of silver. Mm-hmm. He was he was betrayed mm-hmm. like Jesus was for silver. Mm-hmm. And then in, in uh, Genesis 39, 20, he was falsely accused and put into the king's prison by his master in Egypt, Potiphar. And that, Ray, is what you were mm-hmm. referring to. Mm-hmm. And yet he was consistent he did not he did not take the easy way out he did not sin against god uh and then lastly he was he was basically forgotten in prison remember he asked the the butler to remember him mm-hmm. and he didn't and he was forgotten in prison by the one whom he helped mm-hmm. and yet you never you never see anything uh, no vengeance, no uh, retribution, and he just looks to to God. And so, I guess the thing that strikes me with this is how do we respond when we experience adversity? Mm-hmm. Are we asking the question, "Why, Lord?" Mm-hmm. Or do we ask the question? What Lord? What are you trying to teach me, or what are you trying yeah, to two very different questions. show me? And mm-hmm. and I think the what Lord is the appropriate response because when we become followers of Christ, we sign up for Him living in us and slowly, day by day, sanctifying us, making us more Christ like. Well, if we're going to be like Christ like, we're going to have to suffer. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to love people that I mean, Jesus did it to become more Christ like is not what in our mind we, we kind of need to reprogram our minds when we become believers to, hey, what's the Lord trying to teach me? Learn the lesson fast, learn the lesson fast. And that way, that'll be the least amount of time you have to spend in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so this image of becoming Christ-like and, you know, all the wonderful, cushy, gracious, <laughs> God is love things, mm. they all work until somebody reminds you of things like, Jesus said, I came not to bring peace but a sword. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, that the Word of God, for instance, separates bone from mm-hmm. marrow. I mean, that's that's like, that's an image, man, of... Uh, the 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 crux of the tension that exists between justice and grace and salvation. And so when we look in the life of Joseph, how can we not empathize? Don't we all somehow start with the assumption that, gee whiz, I'm a pretty good person, and life really should be about happiness. So... Uh, anything that feels like persecution, anything that feels like adversity, anything that feels like unfairness, I mean, that really shouldn't be happening to me in this life because somehow I've assumed I deserve better. And it's that in and of itself, that assumption, I deserve better, 
is a pure indication of the fallen nature of life and the impact of original sin, Adamic sin, on our lives. The reality of it is, is that a life of faith is about living in and through adversity and still claiming we're victorious through Jesus Christ. You know, and we're familiar with the portion in James where it says, count it all joy when you face trials of many times, many kinds, because knowing this, the trying your faith works patience, that patience have perfect work that may be perfect and, and entire wanting nothing. And eventually it says it builds our maturity. And you read this and you say, Lord, pick on somebody else. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be that person to go through this, these kind of trials, but you're right. It's, it's conforming to the image of Christ. As much as we struggle in the flesh, that's what God's ultimate purpose is, is to conform us. You know, Roman says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may put, prove what is that good, faithful, um, uh, and teachable aspect of God. And so it's, it's a school of hard knocks. The Christian life is not easy if you try to live it on your own. And again, we, we say all these flower things like, you know, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We read it and say, what does that mean? It means letting go and letting God. And that's not easy because, again, as men, a lot of times we have a tendency, we want to make it happen. But God wants to make it happen. And so I think I think Joseph is just a perfect example. He was very godly. He was young, but yet he walked with God and trusted him in difficult circumstances. And so... The people we're talking to right now, you may be going through a difficult situation. You say, you know, because I think there's there's this trail. We've talked about it where when when hope is almost lost, then we go down this path of God does must not care. God isn't fair. And then we get to the point where God may not even be there. And that's a slippery slope yeah. that we can go down. It's a ladder of inference. It just it is. rapidly It is. And, and, and it's a reality that happens when we don't see the rescue when and where we want it to be. But God is still there in spite of it. And like you said, Dwayne, it's not why, Lord, it's what am I supposed to learn and I want to be teachable. You know, there's a there's a term we use in discipleship. We said, pray for God to give you somebody that's fat. Someone's faithful, Faithful, available, available, and teachable. teachable. Okay? Because you can be faithful, not available, available, not teachable. But when you have when you are faithful, available, teachable, that's where God does a work in your heart and life. We need to get a new acronym for our our lady <laughs> disciple makers. <laughs> we don't want to use that in sure discipleship. They don't want to be <laughs> don't want us being fat. Lady. But Ray, I, this is uh, how difficult is it for us to understand how we can be blessed mm. in the midst of adversity, and yet we see Joseph in the midst of adversity. We see where God's hand is upon him. And blessing him, it may not be the way that he wanted it to be, right. but we can see him being blessed every step of the way. He goes to Potiphar's house in Genesis 39, and it says, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was put over his master's house. And so basically Potiphar could see that the Lord was with Joseph, just like Uncle Laban saw with his father, Jacob. He was blessed. God was with him. And so I want him in my employee. I'm going to put him over everything in the house. So, yeah, so we're beginning to see this trend in Joseph's life. Adversity comes to him not just by happenstance, but as other people choose to either neglect him, reject him, uh, entice him, He's drawn by other people into places where he experiences pain. Mm -hmm. Man, that'd be tough to process emotionally. Mm -hmm. Betrayed by your own flesh and blood by your brothers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yet, even when he's sold into slavery, even when he's tempted by Potiphar's, uh, wife, and even when he's put in charge of everything resource wise of the Egyptian kingdom, he continues to do, to do the right thing. He personally chooses to do right, even when people are doing wrong to him. And it's kind of a 
theme all the way through. And then I think we get to Genesis 50 and 20, and, uh, you know, he makes a statement, yeah, what you intended for mm-hmm. harm, uh, God has turned to good. And, yeah, I mean, you make a good point because whenever we're going to cha- face adversity, if we're not in it now, we're going to be in it. And I remember hearing a series um, and the and the um, the topic was what's the wise thing to do? It was, in other words, the person that gave the message basically said that should be the 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 the, the screening for every th- every decision we make. And we've talked about you know uh, stewarding our time, talent, treasures. But what's the wise thing to do in all circumstances, no matter what where we're at? You know, what's the wise? Th- what's the best decision? I think Joseph's a good example of. He could have complained, he could have rebelled, he could have run away from God, he could have done multiple things, but he chose the wise things to do, and God honored it. And I think that can be so true in our lives when we're in those difficult situations and we have all these options out there, we need to really pray and say, God, give me the give me the wise thing to do. You know, the old bracelets, you know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I mean, what is the wise thing to do? What would God have me to do is... Horrible as this situation is I'm in and is difficult and the pressure and the all the circumstances, what is the wise thing to do? And God will honor that. I've seen it personally and I've seen it in other lives. Well we we yeah. know we don't repay evil for evil. We repay evil with good. And so we overcome in Romans they tell us we overcome evil with good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um you know, Joseph is um He's in a he's he, he's a young man. He's seventeen when he's sold into slavery, mm-hmm. and so think about the emotion and our emotions. I think a lot of people get in a lot of trouble because they are emotionally impacted about something they do and don't want to hear. And my my advice to the listeners is just come to the scriptures with an open mind and an open Mm -hmm. heart, not a preconceived idea Mm -hmm. of what you want, but come to the scriptures with an open mind and open heart and see what God has to say. And Joseph, just like Daniel, young men like David, Mm -hmm. young, we see God Mm -hmm. working in these young people's lives. By the time he's 30 years old, he's been in charge of Potiphar's house. He's been in charge with the prison where he Mm -hmm. was for uh, two years and he was in Potiphar's house for 11 years, and then he's called out to interpret Pharaoh's dreams, and he's put in charge. He's number two in all of Egypt. Mm-hmm. Number two in all amazing. of Egypt. That's is a amazing. pretty amazing outcome yeah. for a guy that was sold as an act of human trafficking. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, think about today we deal with people with tremendous emotional pain and hurt and uh they've been they've been betrayed in the worst way some children you mentioned he was 17 and so there's a lesson that uh sometimes we come to the scripture and think i bet god doesn't understand a circumstance like mine Mm. or Mm. i bet god's not interested in a person like me i can remember thinking i you know uh I don't have any problem understanding God so loves the world, but uh, I've reached a point where I can't really blame God for not caring what happens to me because mm. I was keenly aware of my own disobedience. Mm-hmm. But yet God keeps speaking. Right. God keeps calling. God mm-hmm. keeps moving. God mm-hmm. keeps inviting. God keeps healing. God keeps redeeming. God keeps restoring. Let that be an encouragement to you as you go through these passages. So mm-hmm. we commend to you, Genesis, start about chapter 37 and uh, go at least through chapter 50 and look at how God works in the midst of adversity and look how God gives Joseph strength to continue to choose to do right when things are going awfully wrong. Mm-hmm. Hey, I hope that today's uh, podcast has been a blessing to you. We're always willing to walk with you. You can reach out to us at Mount Pisca, P-I-S-G-A-H dot org. And until next time, the Lord be with you and live in encouragement 
for Jesus is our King. Have a great day. Join us next time as we continue to learn to live with open hearts and open hands as followers of Jesus Christ. 